Yesterday we are talking about the practice of Sati Sambhojana. As one activates mindfulness and the goals of the practice of the four foundations of mindfulness, Sati Patana, in a balanced manner, we are said to be cultivating mindfulness and enlightenment factor, Sati Sambhojana. Then one will be able to cultivate also the investigation of states or discrimination of states, namely the Mahavijya Sambhojana, the enlightenment, the enlightenment factor of the investigation of states, that is being able to discriminate between mind and body, that this is Nama, Nama Dhamma, this is Rupa Dhamma, the Sandra mind and body, leading to the conditioned relations and uh, cultivating the true nature of the objects by stages, seeing the three universal interlocking characteristics, namely the impermanent nature, unsatisfactoriness, and selflessness. And especially when one comes to the stage of the knowledge of the fleeting momentary nature of experience, once the Mahavichya Sambhojanga the enlightenment factor of the investigative states will become very strong and obvious. That is, see the true nature of the object, the realities in minute details, all giving place to the new. At that time, there will be no delusion about the objects noted, objects to be noted, no lack of clarity about the objects to be noted. All these will be overcome and one will be undeluded and see things in a clear-cut manner, just like cutting with a sharp knife. Seeing the true nature of these objects, such as cultivating the inside knowledge, the personal jnana. At this stage, one is sure to realize the path and fruition knowledge of the noble ones, uh, at least a fast path, then your energy will build up momentum, as we have discussed yesterday, from the stage of Aradha Vriya, sustained energy, to Pekahida Vriya, uplifting energy, and then to Paripavna Vriya, fulfilling energy. Then the mind will not shrink back, there will be no sluggishness, there will be no indolence, one will be able to overcome the latent tendencies of these defilements and one will be able to reach the opposite stage, namely the Pekahida Viriya, the energy, sustained energy, uplifting energy, fulfilling energy, and so on, until one realizes the path and fruition knowledge of the noble ones. That is, one becomes enlightened. At that time, one's PT will not be just minor, but it will become very strong from Dobala to Palawa PT, such as Obega PT, uplifting energy, that is, your body uh, is uplifted, appears to be uplifted, and the Parana PT, the pervading or permeating type of rapture. So at this point, we came to the conclusion of our yesterday's talk. Today, we shall continue on this subject. As one is able to cultivate mindfulness of tea, sambhojanga, mindfulness enlightenment factor, as one of the factors of the enlightenment factors, body jnana, enlightenment, when it becomes fulfilled, one is able to experience the high level type of wholesomeness. In this way, one will gain the upper hand of unhappiness and dispassion, dispassionate feeling, or discontentment. Because one is realizing the Dhamma Vakti, the Dhamma Tlai. Before that, before, we, before one comes to this stage, one has been thinking about or enjoying, thinking about enjoying the Kama Vakti, sense, sense of delight, because one has been used to it through our, all along our lifetimes. So at this stage one may feel as though one becomes very lonely and one seems to be missing something. 
and one be longing for his sense delight, kamarati, because one has not fully realized or experienced the Dhamma delight as yet. So in between, in the intervening period, there may be some uh, dispassionate feeling, discontentment, unhappy feeling, known as arati. Such is one of the, a sort of uh, an impurity, defilement. Now, as one realizes or cultivates this Dhamma Rati, Dhamma Delight, such as the rapturous feeling piti, as we have discussed, then the yogi would say that, oh, this is it, this is much better. So one would be able to understand the difference between Kama Rati and Dhamma Rati. And uh, hence the Buddha has qualified this Dhamma Rati. But I have said uh, there's uh, this verse, which means uh, it means going into sec- one goes into seclusion, such as coming to the meditation center like you all are doing, noting every rising object as a saying, in accordance with the saying, guarding the mind, guarding the mind with vigilant mindfulness of every rising, paying attention to the body and noting whatever arises at the moment of their arising. And uh, as Yogi cultivates mindfulness, he may be able to note every arising object. Noting becomes, is going on well. And also one is exerting energy, cultivating knowledge, especially in the fleeting way of objects, or giving place to the new. At this stage, Santachi Rasa, the mind becomes peaceful. That means the mind is not affected or shaken by unmining elements such as craving, aversion, or other defilements. And at this stage, one experiences the Balava Piti, strong form of rapturous feeling, so that uh, one is one gains the upper hand of the sense of delight, sense, sense of pleasures. Because one is experiencing the Dhamma Rati, Dhamma Rama, Dhamma pleasure, so that uh, the mind becomes tranquil, not affected, not shaken by these unminding elements. Why? Because one is behaving as a yogi, noting every arising object, cultivating the mind and insight, one becomes yogi, the real yogi, the devoted yogi. Such is the practice, the result of the practice, especially when one comes to the stage of Uriyabhyanyana, the fleeting, momentary nature of experience, the old giving place to the new. When this inside knowledge becomes very heightened, very strong, samadhamam vipassati, one is noting in the right way the objects as the arise and pass away, the old green place to the new. At this stage, one is bound to gain this kind of delight, amanusi vati hoti. That means the kind of delight which is beyond the reach of sensual pleasures which can be enjoyed by human and devas. That is, uh, the, as for Human beings and devas, they think that uh, their sense of pleasures are the best that they can get in their human or deva worlds. They hold this kama rati, the sense of delight, in high esteem, so much so that they are immersed or sunk into this kind of pleasures. Now, this kind of uh, rati, kam, dhamma rati, dhamma delight, exhales many for the sense of pleasures which you can get in the human and deeper world. Hence this expression, Amanusivati. The kind of delight which is beyond the reach of human and deeper, or human pleasures and deva pleasures. Especially at the stage of the fleeting momentary nature of experience, Vyabhyanyana, where you are able to cultivate mind and insight, for the very knowledge, the mind also becomes fresh and good, 
well cultivated and cultivating knowledge as well. Uh, become satisfied with this at this stage. The kind of delight or pleasure that you are experiencing, experiencing is known as unrelinquishable. It is given the, the epithet as the unrelinquishable. You don't want to relinquish with it. You don't want to let go this kind of pleasure. And this kind of pleasure is good in itself and its own right. Because it is arising with great force. And also, this kind of delight, the mud delight, is always fresh and ever new, never gets old. In the case of sense of pleasures that you can experience in the world, in the ordinary world, uh, they get uh, very common and you get bored with one sense of pleasure after another. You have to change these sense of pleasures. They have to be new all the time, one after another. Whereas in the case of the muddy light, you don't have to change it. There's no variety, but it is always new and fresh. That's why it is said that it is good in itself, without any need for changing. So at the same time, it is something which you don't want to let go and relinquishable. Such is Dhamma Rati, Dhamma Delight, or Dhamma Rama, or Dhamma Nandi. Realize the cultivate the high level wholesome things, becomes very satisfied with his strong form of rapture, Balava Piti, and at this stage one will overcome this unhappiness and dispassionate feeling, and there will be no such dispassion or unhappiness or loneliness at this stage, because one becomes delighted with the practice, and one is enjoying the pleasures of the Dharma, and one comes to see the flaws or the defects of sense of pleasures which are dangerous, deadly, and fatal. So the Ma delight is just a reverse of that. It is safe, it is deadless. And it, uh, especially when it comes to the stage of Uriya as the one is noting every arising object, paying attention to the body, in the spirit of the Satipatthana, as one comes to the heightened uh, scope, uh, perspective of awareness, that the, is the deep Samojanga, one's enlightenment factor of Sati becomes heightened. Then one is experiencing the Palawa Piti, very strong form of rapture. So seeing the ever arising object, mind body object, arising and passing away, all giving place to the new in a fleeting manner. So at this stage, it is said that the Pati Piti Pamojam, one gains or realizes uh, rapture and joy, seeing the fleeting momentary nature of experience, and this is qualified as Amata, deadless. And in this way the body has qualified this kind of Piti at this stage. Not that Piti itself is deadless, but that with Piti one enjoys the Dhamma pleasure, one is bound to work towards the extinction of all defilement to the point of no return, that is the stage, the stage of the Arahanship. And if one is able to realize at least the first path, Sarabhana, then one will never fall into the lower realms. So this is a big gain. Hence, Sati has been qualified here as deathless. When one comes to this stage, feet of PT, which has this kind of quality, then one's mind and body will become peaceful and calm, free from the bondage of these unaminding negative elements, especially those unaminding elements such as craving, raga, one will not be affected by craving or washing, or any other defilement such as pride, and the avarice. 
one lot, one's mind will not be shaken or moved by these unabiding elements. Because one is free from such bondage, if one is not free, then one will be indulging in it. Now one is free at this stage of the experiencing of beauty, one overcomes such unabiding negative defilements. Because one's mind and body becomes peaceful and calm. This is the realizing of pasadi, calmness both in mind and body, free from restlessness and remorse and skeptical doubt about the events. Instead, one will come to the conclusion uh, that this is correct, comes to affirmation and determination and resolution, and the mind becomes cool and peaceful, leading to the physical coolness and peaceful, peacefulness. Such is the cultivation of heightened stage of Pasati Samojanga, the calmness, enlightenment factor. As one practices the seven enlightenment factors, uh, there is Pasati, tranquility or calmness, is just given as calmness or tranquility. In fact, uh, there are many associated states which arise as a result of calmness. When the mind and body becomes calm, one becomes levitated mentally, physically, free of stress and tension. One becomes uh, malleable, instead of being rough and coarse, and one will become a proficient mentally and physically, kaminyata, given by the expression kaminyata. Such as when one is sitting for one hour, one will be going beyond one hour, one and a half hour, two hours, and so on. And one will not know that time has taken, so much time has taken. In fact, the one was sitting just for one hour, but it exceeds, the practice exceeds more than one hour. The practice exceeds one hour. So that in, in this way the mind becomes proficient and strong, such as kaya kaminata, chitta kaminata, physical proficiency, mental proficiency. And instead of previously you are you have to exert your energy purposely, now you have to do it purposely. You can do it casually, even if you do it casually, uh, the practice will go on. Uh, be able to cruise along naturally. In the beginning you are affected by unbearable sensations in the body. Now you are not uh, at that stage when you are feeling unbearable, you feel very dull and unhappy. Now you are very active and diligent and wakeful, leading to rectification of both mind and body. Previously, you might have done something wrong to undermine you, yourself and others, but now you become rectified physically and mentally, so that you will wish to make self-confession and confession to your teacher, the wrongs that you have done previously, and tender your apology. In this way, your mind becomes uh, sincere, both physically and mentally. And uh, that's why, although just pasati is mentioned as such tranquility or calmness, in fact, uh, uh, the mind becomes adorned with other associated beautiful mental states, so that uh, not only this pasati, but also other associated mental states which uh, arise together with pasati also will become pure and beautiful. Such is how one purifies one's mind. So the dhamma, the practice of dhamma is purifying one's life. This, uh, as one is able to come to this stage, the Ajitikayo Sukhambiriri, with the tranquility or calmness of mind and body, one becomes, one feels joy. 
pervading, with the pervading or permeating type of joy, the kind of joy which will permeate through your body. There will be a sense of well-being, and compared to the sense of pleasures, one will feel that it excels manifold because this brings about the feeling of joy. Like when, uh, when you feel hot, especially in the summer, and you go into a cool air conditioned room or something like that, you feel so joy and peaceful and calm. But this kind of joy or happiness is not yet assured happiness as yet. This can still be affected and shaken by worldly things. It is not yet calm, not yet uh, the real calmness. Only when you come to the stage, the high insight knowledge, state of insight knowledge, such as the Sankara Rupa Kalyana, knowledge of the equanimity towards our formation, then you will get the real kind of calmness. But even that calmness is still worldly, mundane, lokiya. Uh, one must reach the real cessation of mind and body. Uh, this path now we are practicing is leading towards the final, the ultimate cessation of mind and body. Then only this will be assured happiness or calmness. At this stage, uh, one comes to realize that once the ma pleasures excel manifold, the sense of pleasures, and uh, to realize this kind of <coughs> general pleasure, this is the method. We are walking along the right path. And then one must have belief, one must have faith that there is such a thing. If you are, if one does not know that uh, there is such a kind of happiness, then one will not hold this in high esteem. There is, there is such a thing as this kind of happiness, uh, from permeating happiness, permeating, uh, permeating rapture to tranquility, from tranquility to cessation, from cessation to general happiness. If one does not believe in it, then one will hold this sense of, uh, sense of pleasures in high esteem, such as seeing good objects, physical objects is enjoyable, hearing nice sweet music is enjoyable, and tasting good food is enjoyable, having good touch is enjoyable. All these things are the best that we can get in the world. So one will hold this in high esteem, thinking that they are a short kind of happiness. In fact, they are not. They don't give any guarantee. They don't give any assurance. And if one goes to them and talk about this mind and body, if there is no such thing as that mind and body, then they will become depressed, saying that, oh, you are only talking about mind and body being impermanent, unsatisfactory, and selfless. So the Buddha Dhamma is not good, and not, not something to be followed. They become afraid of it. It's just it. But for those who believe in this Buddha Dhamma, in the who have faith in the realities of mind and body, such as the discernment of mind and body and the conditionality, and the universal characteristics, then for them, uh, they will not view things as, as permanent. Because they know that things are impermanent, they will overcome the view of impermanence. And seeing the unsatisfactory nature, they will overcome the view of unsatisfactoriness, uh, the Kovagana view of satisfactoriness. Only when you think that they are satisfactory, you will become attached to them, you wish to enjoy them. Now you know that things are unsatisfactory, they are suffering, you, don't, you won't become attached, you don't want to enjoy them. So, all the, and then 
all these things are arising on their own, not at their will, at your will. They are mere process, they are mere phenomena rolling on. And uh, in this way, when you come to realize that, one will overcome the wrong views. Especially when it comes to the knowledge of the objects, seeing them as old, uh, giving place to the new, then one will overcome such high esteem in respect of the sense of pressures. Then you say to yourself that these sense of pressures are just emptiness, nothing. At this stage, one will overcome the wrong views. And then, for some people, they think that uh, by leaving their mind uncontrolled, having free will, they get what they want and they will enjoy it. But such kind of enjoyment as this uh, untoward uh, aftermath, they may impurities, they become impure, they become blemished, and they become uh, despicable. In fact, uh, the, the, this kind of... And in the case of controlling your mind, in the beginning you may be able to... you may have some problem, a difficulty of controlling your mind, practicing the restraint of your faculties, but in the aftermath, as a result of the restraint of your sense, sense, senses, you become, your mind becomes pure and unblemished day by day. And if you cultivate the cultivation of knowledge, especially at the stage of this Uriyabhya Jnana, knowledge of the thoughts arising and passing away of objects, you will come to say to yourself, alas, these are the realities. And uh, you will overcome the esteem, the high esteem you have placed on the sense of pleasures previously. Coming to understand, this understanding will lead to faith and confidence. And this is the correct, you will have faith in the correctness of the matter and also have faith in the Buddha who has preached, expounded the path method and also in those individuals who have practiced and realized happiness, real Dhamma happiness as a result of the practice. You will come to accept that such is faith and confidence. Previously, uh, your faith and confidence are not strong. Now, with experience, you are cultiv cultivating this experiential faith. Unless one becomes familiar with the practice of the Tibetana, one will always hold this sense of pleasure and high esteem, and then thinking that uh, there is no other uh, pleasure, no other enjoyment better than sense of pleasures. As for those who are practiced as a Tibetana in a correct manner, systematic manner, uh, and especially when one comes to this stage of inside knowledge, one will come to understand that uh, this kind of pleasure, it is the mind pleasure, exerts manifold the sense of pleasures. Coming to the conclusion, uh, confirmation that this method is correct. We shall continue tomorrow.